Hi folks, Charlie Shelton with Disneyland News today, back once again to try some tasty treats. It is springtime here, and don't let the cloudy weather fool you. Uh, spring is on its way, and bringing with it all the flavors of spring. So we have some new treats here at the Disneyland Resort to try all over property. We have Disneyland, we have DCA. We also have some new treats for the Disney 100th celebration that's kicking off, so you can find that video on our channel as well. But let's start right here at Jolly Holiday. So here we have uh, several sweet treat options, and let's start out with the chocolate strawberry macaron. This is a chocolate macaron with dark chocolate mousse and strawberry compote filling. I like the macarons here. They're just so delicate, you know, like I, my big clumsy fingers, I always crush them. So I'm, I have to be very gentle with this, but it is very cute. Um, it's not for Lunar New Year, but like all the red and, and the little flower and everything, it looks like it could almost be a Lunar New Year treat, uh, which is coming up here at the end of the month. So let's give it a shot. Mm. It's very chocolate and very chewy. Um, I'm not getting any strawberry. I think that's probably in the middle, but... Uh, yeah, there we go. So it's there is a medallion up in the middle. Oh. The flavor is good, but the texture is weird on its own. Um, if you eat it in the macaron, I'm sure it's fine. Hmm. Okay. So here's something weird. When I pulled it out and took a bite of it just on its own, strawberry flavor came through very, very well, but the texture was really weird. Like it's this weird little jiggly cake thing in the middle. Um, but when eaten in the macaron itself, it's so subtle that it's just overpowered by the sweetness and the chocolate, so it's completely lost. So it's either weird texture, strawberry flavor, or no strawberry at all. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's not bad, but the Mickey macaron here, the raspberry one, is so well known and so good. It's like, why would you deviate from that for something that's only okay, you know? But um, if you're a huge chocolate strawberry fan, there you go. Okay, next up we have the chocolate caramel shortbread tart. This is caramel and chocolate ganache shortbread tart, red colored white chocolate mousse, and sea salt. It looks like a little candy bar, like with, with kisses on top. Like it's just, that's a lot of mousse. So like, you know, you could probably do this in three bites if it wasn't for all that mousse. Um, but let's try. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> this tastes exactly like the chocolate caramel, the bourbon chocolate caramel tart from the Festival of Holidays across the way that just closed uh, the other day. So if, if that was like your favorite thing at the festival and you're missing it, just come over and get this. This is like the exact same thing just with frosting on top. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's even like, like texturally, it's a little bit different. The chocolate is a little more rigid, but the caramel is nice and chewy, or not chewy, uh, flowy, like thin caramel. That's, that's really pleasant. So I enjoyed the tart over there, and I'm glad that it's come back in a different way to be on a menu again, because uh, it was really enjoyable. And I had that one several times uh, throughout the festival and so having it back I'm really pleased about this it's the sea salt these these like pink crusted sea salts are really cute and that's a nice way of presenting it and you don't mind so much like a mouthful of salt you know when you get them uh, it works well with the chocolate and the caramel yeah that's really nice <coughs> again a little small for the price but you know it's very tasty. 
Okay, next entry is the Mickey Mouse shaped blueberry scone. This is just a blueberry scone. That's uh, Mickey Mouse shaped. Mine is a little bit off just because of the baking process as it rises. Like, you know, you can see what they were going for, but it is a little lopsided, but I'm not upset about it. You know, they, they, it, this is just what happens when you bake. So I love scones. I love scones. So I'm very excited for this. And this is something, honestly, I could see myself getting like time and again, cause I just love them. Mm. It's a little softer and doughier than I would like. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's definitely one style of scone that are a little on the chewier side. Maybe a little almost underdone. Um, I like my scones a little bit more crumbly, you know? Um, but but still not bad, the flavor is great. It's not overly sweet. It's very bready. And there's plenty of blueberries throughout. I mean, look at, look at this. This isn't, you know, when you get a muffin or a blueberry, a muffin or a scone or something, and it's like a blueberry muffin, there's one blueberry somewhere on the top and then nothing throughout. This has plenty of blueberries all throughout. Good, you know, good sized blueberries. Well, what I need to go with my scone is a nice cup of tea. So we've got the new specialty tea. This is sweetened iced tea with vanilla whipped cream. It doesn't seem so much like a specialty if you just kind of add whipped cream to your iced tea, um, to your sweet tea. It, it sounds a little weird to be honest, but um, you know, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's, it's just sweet tea with, with whipped cream in it. Like, and I, I don't know that I necessarily want uh, whipped cream in my sweet tea. Yeah, like it's a, it's a fine sweet tea. The creaminess is just off putting a little bit. I think because I'm used to like iced tea being a certain way um, and the, the creaminess of it just throws me off a little bit. I don't usually put cream, like I, I can put milk or something in hot tea. I don't know why that is. I don't know why we, we say that that's different. Uh, you can put milk or whatever in your hot tea, but not in your iced tea, but I've just never really done it because it just sounds weird to me. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of don't need it. I'd be happier with just the sweet tea on its own, I think, um, you know, and it's not the best offering. They have so many great drinks here um, that uh, like, I, I don't really need to go for this. So, but the scone was lovely. So, you know, tea and scones, I guess. All right, uh, next up we have, I think this is, yeah, this is our last thing. This is the strawberry stuffed croissant. Strawberries, pastry cream, strawberry coulis and powdered sugar. So this is definitely the most eye-catching. I mean, you know, the, the mousse or the, the brownie with the little penguin guy is really cute. But this is like, I've seen several times people walking through the seating area and this is turning heads because it's just, I mean, look at this. This is beautiful. So let's try it. Hmm. Wow. That, the strawberry coulis in there really helps to sell the strawberry flavor. Um, like the fresh strawberries are already bright and strawberry flavored, you know, like, like real strawberry flavor, not candy or canned strawberries. It's real, which is great and it's rare. And then the coulis just kind of helps to sell that. It's the same flavor, it's not a fake canned flavor. It's a real strawberry freshness coming through that is all too rare in a theme park. Um, I've, I've said it before on many of the foods that I've had where it's 
fruit is involved, it's always canned or syrupy and, and candy flavored. And I'm just so happy to have something that actually grew out of the ground, you know, recently. Like it's, it's so nice and it's so fresh and alive and it, it balances well with the, the crispy buttery croissant where like that, you know, croissants aren't heavy, but like that buttery pastry flavor and the cream are kind of heavier and then having that bright pop of fruit coming through really works well and like i said that that strawberry coulis that's all the way through this all the strawberries are mixed up in it um, that really helps to sell the flavor all the way mm. all right well that's fantastic still got a long ways to go though let's head to the next spot Okay, next up for the spring items, we are over here in Tomorrowland at Alien Pizza Planet, and we have a couple of items here. First up is the Chorizo con Papa Pizza Slice. This is classic pizza sauce, mozzarella and queso fresco, sliced potatoes, chorizo, and marinated red onions garnished with cilantro and chives. So it also has these cute little edible flowers on top, which is a nice little touch. Alrighty, let's give it a shot. It's, it's only okay. I mean, it's kind of like a um, sausage pizza uh, with, the, with the chorizo. It's a little bit spicier than traditional sausage, but the potatoes don't really bring much to it. There's a lot of nice cheese between the mozzarella and the queso fresco, um, and the onions are, are pleasant, but like it's just kind of only okay it's only okay um you know the potatoes just kind of get lost they just taste you know what it is they bring that crispy you know uh uh like fried potato flavor almost that's so similar to the crust that it kind of just gets lost like y you just interpret it as as crust um so, you know, it's not bad. It's just not wowing me. And I think I want a little something extra. They had a, a pizza slice here recently, the charcuterie pizza slice. That was a lot going on and very weird. And it actually worked really well because there was more going on. This one, they went on the other end where it's like, there's not quite enough. It just tastes like any given pizza slice and not a particularly good pizza slice at that. Like it's, it's you know, mass-produced theme park pizza, so it's already kind of going to be only okay. So in a dish like this, you really got to bring something extra to to wow people and make it memorable. And this just didn't do it. Um, you know, like it, it's on par with like the pepperoni, you know, that's fine. Let's dive into the next one. This is the chicken enchilada pasta. This is a chef's choice pasta. Seasoned grilled chicken, corn and onion relish, creamy tomatillo sauce, crema, cilantro, and corn. So this is uh, the, sh the chef's choice pasta. Made a good choice. Um, you know, so I was sitting here dreading having to eat this. Um, chicken enchilada pasta just sounds awful to me. Um, if you were to describe it to me and reading the menu, like it just sounds like a bad idea. I'm pleasantly surprised. This is much better than I thought it was going to be. It could be also because I came in having, you know, expectations of dread and I'm not dreading it. I'm not blown away, but it's definitely better than I thought it was going to be and, um, edible. Like I... Whereas the pizza didn't try hard enough. This one tries really hard, went, swung for the fences, and it, it hit. Um, I would not think this would work. I would not think chicken enchilada pasta is a good idea in any universe. But I was wrong. This is, this is pleasant. I mean, you know, it's, I would like, I think, maybe a red sauce instead of the green sauce. But, like, transitioning it from the... Uh, the tortilla flavor and, and the 
chicken and all that over into having pasta as a base and making it a sauce and making it still coherent as a pasta dish, um, it works It works surprisingly well. I can't believe that I, I actually enjoy this. Like, it's so weird. And it sounds so awful, but, you know, I love it when I'm wrong about these things. I love it when I find something that I would never have tried on my own, and I find something that, that is actually good. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. There's a little bit of heat to it. Um, it's starting to build. I, I can't finish this because I still have a long way to go, but I'm gonna take it with me and eat it later in the day. Um, but that does have heat. It's starting to build. I feel like if I did work my way through the entire plate right now, the aggregate heat would would uh, uh, mount up. That is that is not unspicy. Uh, <laughs> All right. So also in Tomorrowland, over at the Tomorrowland pretzel cart, we have the milk and cookies pretzel. This is a cream cheese filled pretzel with taro sweetened condensed milk and topped with Oreo cookie crumbles. I don't know that. Um, Taro, like when you say milk and cookies, I don't know that I'm thinking a taro condensed milk. That's an interesting little twist. It makes it purple, uh, which fits, I guess, for Tomorrowland. Like I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's just not something I would have thought of off the top of my head. I wouldn't have thought taro coated pretzel uh, when you say cookies and milk. But I, I think it. I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll bring something extra to it. Hmm. A lot going on in this one. A lot going on. Um, all the individual flavors come through. I don't know that they're coalescing. They don't seem to be working in tandem. They don't complement each other. They're just all present. Like the butteriness of, of the cream cheese inside, uh, the roastiness of the pretzel, the, like that breadiness, the sweetness of the condensed milk, even the chocolatiness of the cookies. It's all there. The predominant flavor, I think, out of all of it is the taro. Um, it's, it's coming through really... I don't want to say heavily, but like it's it's definitely the predominant flavor note, which I think I want because it's almost that little bit of, I don't know, fruitiness that sets it off. Um, and as I said, I wouldn't have thought taro with milk and cookies, but you know, this is this is great. I really like this. I they they oftentimes so many of the pretzels in Tomorrowland, not elsewhere, but in Tomorrowland, the experimental specialty pretzels are oftentimes weird like like they try really hard and it just doesn't come out this one tries really hard so it fits with with that theme for the tomorrowland pretzels but it really works um i think it it's missing it's either got too much of one thing or not enough of something else i kind of want it to coalesce more into a single dish as opposed to each of the flavors in business for itself but as it is I really like it and it's it's bringing a lot to the table it's very complex and interesting and i do want to finish this whole thing so uh i can't right now though because we have so much more to eat let's keep going next stop is at red rose tavern for their breakfast menu we're going to be trying the gourmet breakfast sandwich this is an herb blend and creme fraiche egg maple butter spread munster and crispy bacon on a toasted english muffin so that is an impressive sounding menu. It doesn't look all that impressive. Um, it looks a little a little different, but you know, I'm interested to give it a shot. That's a lot of flavors to live up to. Hmm. Okay, so it looks weird. It looks like an egg patty. Um, and it is. I mean, let's let's not sugarcoat it. It is a an egg patty, like a pre-made egg patty that's slapped together with some herbs in it. But compared to a lot of the other breakfasts where it is just like an egg patty or like those pre-made like egg beater style 
foamy eggs. Um, compared to that, the flavor is so much better in these. So if you're going to go for something that's not, you know, like a traditional real egg, if you're gonna go for something that has an egg patty in a breakfast sandwich like this, this is definitely the better version of it. The bacon's nice and crispy, and the Munster works well for what it is. A lot of it has bled out onto the paper, because I guess it's been um, heated and reheated and reheated, and it just kind of bleeds out. Um, but that which stays on the sandwich does work well. I think Munster is a good choice for this. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little less overpowering than like a Swiss or something, and it allows the subtleties of the egg to come through a little bit more. Um, did not get any maple whatsoever. The maple butter spread, I think it's mostly just butter uh, to toast the croissant because I don't get any notes of maple, even in just the thing itself. There's no maple. It's just it's just a, a toasted English muffin. So, but it does come with a side of the all important tater tots, which are the best in Disneyland. Mmm. Alrighty, let's move on to the next. So it is also spring at Black Spire Outpost on the faraway world of Batu. So we've traveled over here to try one of their new offerings. These are the Sullust chips, and they're available at the uh, Droid beverage carts around Black Spire Outpost. So we stopped in to get some. They're very pink, um, which Sullust is like a volcano planet and it's, it's got lava running everywhere, so I believe that's what this is from. I don't wanna like them, but I do. These are just like classic junk food. They're very, very salty. Uh, the creaminess from like the ranch powder almost like Doritos, like the Cool Ranch Doritos. Um, but the hit of spice from the buffalo as well. I like tasting them. I know they're bad for me. They just taste too good to be anything other than horrible junk food. But boy, they're pleasant. They're really good. I like them a lot. Mmm. The price point on these is high for a bag of chips, but wow, those are awesome. Oh man, that's dangerous. I could eat this whole bag in a sitting without even thinking. These, these are gonna go so fast. Wow, these are fantastic. Um, like I said, they are very salty. There's a lot of seasoning and it depends on which chip you get. Some of them have more, some of them have less. Uh, but like, you know, averaging it out, the seasoning itself is very salty. Uh, the, they're very garlicky, like you're not gonna smell good after eating these. But the flavors, there's just so much going on. There's heat, there's creaminess from the ranch, there's a little bit of herbaceousness, I guess, also from the ranch. Um, very complex and spiced. I really enjoy these a lot. But like I said, you know, they're junky. They're really, this is, this is Super Bowl food. So, uh, I'll probably get a few bags of these to take back home to Planet Earth to watch the big game later in February, so. All right, well, those are really good. Let's keep going. We come now to Hungry Bear Restaurant where we have a couple of new items. First up is the Loaded Chocolate Chip Funnel Cake. This is Cookie Crumbles, Chocolate Chip Cookie Dough Ice Cream, Whip Topping, and Chocolate Sauce on the traditional funnel cake. Um, I've had a lot of really good funnel cakes. I, historically, I wasn't a huge fan of funnel cakes up until recently, and they've had a lot of really good specialty offerings in their funnel cakes, not only here, but everywhere in Disneyland. Um, their funnel cake program has, has really come up, so I am looking forward to this. And I, you know, uh, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, like who's going to be upset about that? That's great. I mean, it's just vanilla with chocolate chips in it, but it's good. Let's try the funnel cake. Mm. 
Okay, so this is just kind of a normal funnel cake with nice chocolate chip pieces on it. Like the cookie crumbles is literally just a broken chocolate chip cookie on top. Um, the chocolate chip ice cream is nice, but like I would like it just as much in a cup or a cone. I don't think, whereas a lot of the other um, specialty funnel cakes recently kind of work well together. Like they use the base of the fried dough of the funnel cake to enhance and tie everything together. This one just seems like the funnel cake exists and then also there are things with it. But like the chocolate sauce on top of the funnel cake doesn't bring much. The chop chocolate chip cookie pieces are just sitting there. Um, and then the ice cream, like I said, it's it's good, but it's, you know, it could be sitting here on its own and I would be happy about it. Um, it just doesn't seem like too much beyond a normal funnel cake. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a normal funnel cake, but I'm just not blown away by it, you know? Um, there are other better funnel cakes here at the park. So... It just seems like a waste of room in my stomach when there are so many other great things to eat here. This is this is kind of normal. This is this is a uh, state fair fair. So, next up, we have the berry lemonade. This is served over ice with berry compote. So, I guess it's just a lemonade with berry compote in it and you see it all coalescing at the bottom of the glass here. Um, it's got a nice lemon slice on top. Mm. That's nice. It's just a classic berry lemonade. Like there's, you know, I, I think it's hard to mess up. Like it's, it's good berry flavor. It's from a compote instead of flavored syrups only. And it just tastes like artificial sweet. Like this is real berries. And even if it is, you know, compote cooked down and probably canned or something. Um, but it's real berry flavor. It's not artificial, which I like. Yeah, it's, and this is also, you know, this is a spring menu. It's a gray overcast day today. It's going to rain later, but spring is coming faster than we think. This is going to be great for spring. Sitting here on the upper deck patio, looking out over the rivers of America with the boats going by and the canoes and everything. This is going to be a really great spring and early summer refreshing berry lemonade. And that's the best drink I've had so far today. <laughs> that's really pleasant. So it's a winner in that category. All right, let's keep moving on. Right, next up, we are back in Tomorrowland at Galactic Grill, where we have a trio of new items here. Let's start with the drink. This is the Blackberry Cucumber Limeade. It is blackberry infused limeade garnished with a blackberry coulis and cucumbers. So there we go. It's very cute. Um, very purple. Wow. It's very sweet, but it's like fresher and more tart than I would expect almost from something like this. Like, you know, uh, they're doing really well with the spring foods with these fresh real fruit flavors. Of course, I've got, um, cucumber and blackberries here floating in my drink but like even the lime I'm getting like a fresh pop of lime I don't know if it's from zest or or what but it's it's really good and it works well with this instead of just being you know the sugary lime flavored limeade it's really nice and the the herbaceousness almost herbal quality from the cucumber sets everything off and kind of ties it together. The blackberries work with the sweetness of the limeade and the, the zest kind of cuts through all that. The, the tartness of the lime cuts through all the sweet of the blackberry and the sugared limeade. Um, but then that, that cucumber really brings like an earthy characteristic to it that makes it more complex. That's really nice. I enjoy that. All right, let's start in on the food. First up is the grilled pineapple hamburger. This is an Angus beef patty 
grilled spiced ham and pineapple, togarashi slaw and sweet mayonnaise on a toasted brioche bun. So when they say ham, it's spiced ham or spam for short. And looking at it, that's what I thought it was. I hadn't read the menu description yet. So it's pineapple and spam burger. I don't know, we'll see. I like spam musubi, but I don't know, spam on its own. Let's, let's try. Huh. Okay, here's something interesting. Um, when you first bite into it, it tastes processed and canned and not very pleasant. But that's not from the grilled Spam. That's from the burger. Like the burgers here, the burger patties are not spectacular. They're just, you know, frozen beef patties. Uh, a little bit thicker and more alive than you would find at McDonald's, but like from probably like a big buy, you know, in bulk kind of thing. Just a frozen patty. They never really come out good and like with all of this stuff it always you you love it or you hate it based on the toppings not because of the burger itself. With this one the burger is so present in this and that uh, preserved canned flavor or character from the Spam kind of brings out that flavor in the beef as well and makes it a little less enjoyable. Um, having a bite of just the Spam on its own, it's actually better than with the burger. The grilled pineapple is great. The slaw um, provides a nice crunch, but it kind of gets mixed up in the mayonnaise. It's more a textural element than like a flavor from the slaw so much just because of the sweetness of the pineapple and the mayonnaise and the spam and the beef it all overpowers the slaw a little bit more so you're not really getting a lot of that flavor coming straight through but it works i think it needs that little bit of crunch from the cabbage um so it, it comes together well i mean you know it's not terrible it's not great it's kind of somewhere in between um it's it's good enough and i guess if you're here if you're going for a burger this is probably more interesting than any of the other burgers on their menu right now um so at least it's unique and it brings with the pineapple and and the mayonnaise and everything it brings some uniqueness to it that's interesting enough to keep you eating it uh but i wouldn't rate it as overall like a great burger it's just a burger that happens to be here so we have one more sandwich to try. This is the mushroom Philly sandwich. This is sauteed mushrooms, red bell peppers, caramelized yellow onions, crispy fried spiced red onions and chives served on a sourdough hoagie roll. All right, so this is a uh, Philly steak sandwich without the steak, it's just the mushrooms all the way through. And we've got lots of different kinds of mushrooms in here. This is really, this is really cool. And it does, it does like the little pieces look like shaved steak too, so it, you know. Mm. Wow. So this has got um, all of the creamy ingredients and the cheese and everything are inside the hoagie roll, which is a little tough to bite through. So as you're biting it, all the mushrooms squeeze out the side. The roll is good. It's what I want for this, you know, rather than soft bread. This is what I want. So it's just the nature of the beast, but it's difficult to eat and it's difficult to get a good amount of mushrooms and the onions and the the creamy insides all together at once it comes out to be like a bite of each and that's just how it's got to be but like all the flavors are working together really well even one bite to the next it works together really well as a succession of different flavors in different bites that's really pleasant it's even without the meat though this is surprisingly heavy. It's heavier than I thought it was going to be for a vegetarian dish. Um, 
the creaminess inside is just, look at this. Look at that. It's just so full of so much going on in there. The cheese and the bread and everything inside, there's just so much going on and a lot of really interesting flavors. It all does work well together. But whereas some of the dishes, you know, like the, the grilled hamburger, like you can get a lot of the individual things um, and it works well together, but like you can still pull out like, oh, that's the Spam, that's the pineapple, that's the, the burger. Uh, with this, it all kind of comes together, even bite to bite, you know, with only one bite of mushrooms, it kind of tastes very similar to what's in the bread. It's all a uniform flavor. I can see how they all kind of came together to create that flavor, but all the pieces taste basically the same, so you're not really missing out on much. But that's, that's fantastic. I, that might be my favorite grab-and-go burger sandwich here available at Disneyland right now. That's really good. And there's so many mushrooms in there, like it's so full. That's great, great value for the money. Alrighty, let's keep going. Next up is Troubadour Tavern up here in Fantasyland, right near It's a Small World. And we have a new drink here, the Gummy Worm drink. This is Gold Peak Tea, Pineapple, Mango, Tamarind, and Orange Juice over ice with candy worms. Uh, the cast member did tell me immediately when he gave it to me, the candy worms are in there. They're just down here. The gummy worms sank completely to the bottom, uh, but they are there. So I, I think that's really the only thing that makes it a gummy worm drink, but let's try it. Hello. I guess it kind of tastes like a gummy worm as a drink, I guess. I mean, like what, it's hard to pin down what a gummy worm flavor would be. Like what, what is that flavor other than gummy worm? And I guess it does kind of taste like a gummy worm. It's good though. This is another one of those drinks that like, it's hard to pick out the individual flavors. I can kind of pick out the tamarind and maybe a little bit of the tea, but like this is definitely a coherent or cohesive drink that, that comes together and it's one single flavor. There are notes of tamarind and notes of tea, but it's, it's definitely one drink on its own. Mm. It's, it's sweet and refreshing, but it's not blowing me out. It's not overpowering, you know, it's, um, it's definitely more uh, syrupy and, and a little bit sweeter, I think, than I was expecting. I mean, with a name like Gummy Worm Drink, I probably should have expected it to be sugary, but um, I don't know, from the tea, I was kind of expecting a little more herbal, a little more, you know, tea-based, watery, like an iced tea uh, with fruit juice in it, but it's, it's definitely juice with a little bit of tea in it. It's pleasant though, and I, if you're gonna sit here for a little while and watch Tale of the Lion King or to pair this with lunch from Troubadour Tavern, this is a great option. I'm, I'm liking this a lot. All right, well, I got to drink my way down to get to the gummy worms. I got a green and red gummy worm in there, but I got to drink all the way down to it. So let's keep moving on. Okay, next up, we are on Main Street at Refreshment Corner, and we have a barbecue picnic dog. This is a pulled pork topped foot long hot dog with Coca-Cola barbecue sauce and coleslaw, and it's even got a pickle shoved in the side. So um, it doesn't really, you know, so much go with the dog as it is just kind of also in the bun. Um, but like it's considerably shorter than the rest of the dog. So that is just, I mean, look at this. Look at this massive hunk. That's insane. Hmm. That tastes like a barbecue picnic. That's a perfect name. Yeah. Um, it's got all the flavors of a picnic. Um, the French fried onions on top, which I don't think are on the menu. Um, the hot dog is a big beef hot dog. The barbecue pork. The Coca-Cola barbecue sauce doesn't really come through a whole lot, but like, whatever, you know, it's still barbecue sauce.
it's very light on the barbecue sauce. Um, but it's it's still present and it's enough to give that hint of flavor. I would have liked um, this seems more like a like a slow coat slow cooked pulled pork. Um, you know, like a slow cooker or like an oven roasted pulled pork. I would have liked a little bit of the smokiness from like some smoked barbecue pulled pork. I think that would have gone a long way to reinforce those flavors. But as it stands, the hot dog, the coleslaw, the onion chips, uh, the pulled pork, the barbecue sauce, all of it together, it does taste like a barbecue picnic. This is great. Even the pickle, like that's that's kind of weird. Um, it's weird that it's so much smaller than the rest of the hot dog. It's not like a Chicago dog where it's short and you have the pickle all the way along. It's like just a little bit of pickle in there. So I kind of want more of it just because it goes well with this and I want to have it through the entirety of the hot dog. So um, this is this is good. I kind of. This is another one I really wasn't looking forward to just because it seemed like so much, but it all works well together. Each of, This is another one where you can get each of the flavors, but they work well as a dish. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily cohesive in that it's uniform in flavor, like each of the flavors is there, but they complement each other very well and come together very well. So that's that's great. Okay, so last up at Disneyland for the spring foods, we have a strawberry churro and a chocolate marshmallow dipping sauce. I believe the strawberry churro is returning, but the uh, chocolate marshmallow dipping sauce is new, so we thought we would revisit both of them together. And what more perfect place to do this than up here on the deck of the Main Street Station, where we're looking down over characters greeting and everybody having a great time this is really a great place to wrap up this video and enjoy a churro so alrighty let's give this a shot here nice and goopy all right hmm so as I was shooting photos of this churro, I could smell it while holding it at arm's length. It's so fragrant, but it's more fragrant than it is flavorful. Like I don't get a lot of the strawberry flavor like I do from the smell. It just kind of tastes like the smell that I've been smelling, like it's perfumey, but it's not really strawberry so much. Um, I don't know, it's hard to describe until you taste it. It's, it tastes like the strawberry smell, but it doesn't taste like a strawberry. It's not even like strawberry syrup or strawberry candy flavored. Like it's just not very strawberry. It just kind of tastes like a perfume. Um, and let me just try it on its own. Yeah, the, the dipping sauce kind of dulls it a little bit and brings a little more sweetness which i don't think it really needs but um yeah on its own it's it is just kind of perfumey on top of the churro flavor so um let me try just some of the sauce here wow that's very chocolate more than i would expect um the dipping sauce is good you know what I want the dipping sauce with a regular churro because that's a good enough flavor. Like it's it's very chocolate forward, like cocoa powder almost. In the thick, creamy, marshmallowy sauce, it works really well. Like looking at it being so pale like this, I kind of expected it to be like a milk chocolate flavor, but it's very chocolatey. So I'm pleased with it and I kind of just want the regular churro to complement this rather than the strawberry one because I feel like this strawberry perfume flavor is just getting in the way of enjoying the sauce. Um, the strawberry perfume churro is not, not my favorite. Yeah.
tea, it kind of cuts down the chocolate flavor because you're distracted by the strawberry perfume. Um, but it doesn't do much to really, like the chocolate doesn't then conversely balance out the strawberry perfume flavor. It's kind of overtaken by it. So that's too bad. The churro isn't great, but the chocolate sauce is. That's really nice. Alrighty, well that's everything we've got here at Disneyland. We have a bunch more spring foods to try over across the way at DCA. And we also have some uh, specialty items for the Disney 100 Years of Wonder celebration, which is kicking off today as well with all of their, some of their food offerings and then more coming on the 27th. You can find that video on our YouTube channel as well. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for stopping by, we'll see you next time.